So my only class of the day turned into a video recorded lecture. So, you know, to the non-student, that translates to, I got to sleep all day today, which I don't mind it. Do not freaking mind it. It turned into just freaking uh, pretty much wake up, eat a bunch of cereal and eggs, go back to sleep, get up, have some ground beef and rice, go do my cardio, come back. A couple more loops of food and sleeping. And now it's 9.06. I feel very well fed and hydrated, so I'm freaking ready to thrash arms. Tries first, then buys. I'm going to get some forearms in as well today. I'm trying to think of how I want to approach overhead tricep work, because I haven't been doing it, and I think that that stretch on the long head, right, when you're doing extensions where your arm's way up here, usually there's a machine for that, but... Well, if there's a machine for that, that's what I'd be using. So I need to come up with some kind of system or something, because I need some overhead work bad. I, I'm not saying it's guaranteed going to be like a total change, but you know, I do think my triceps are slacking just a touch behind everything else. So I want to hit them in a different way like that. I'll try to change up the training a touch. So I'll figure something out. I don't really love overhead, like, dumbbell. I mean, with one arm, it's okay. With one arm, it's okay. Maybe I'll do some of that later. But with one, with both arms behind the head at once, I have a little bit of trouble with it. I'm kind of... So not only am I just sort of tight in my whole shoulder area, so getting back in that position is a little funky. Every time I do it, and I'm like, you know, sitting down on a bench or something, it always puts a ton of pressure on my lower back, which I don't love. Because like whenever I sit on a bench, I'm like arched to kind of like stabilize the weight or whatever. So yeah, I don't really love it. So behind the head, tricep extensions with a dumbbell, that's kind of off the table. I'll find something. I will freaking find something. But other than that, you know, single arm light extensions, normal push downs, maybe, eh. Nah, probably not Skull Crushers. They're not really jumping out at me right now. They're okay, but I'm kind of... it <laughs> With Skull Crushers, it's almost the worst of two worlds for me. Because I like going heavy on them. I like the feeling and the amount of tension that I can put on my triceps with them. But if I do them when I'm fresh, you know, relatively fresh in the workout, then I go so heavy that it kind of wrenches my elbows a little bit it kind of makes it's just not an awesomely it doesn't feel awesome doing the reps like I can tell I'm putting a lot of strain on all my stuff down back here so you would think okay well if it if it's hurts going a little bit too heavy then maybe save it for the end of the lift and then just go lighter which perfectly valid logic but when I do the skull crushers with lighter weight I can't really get as good of a squeeze. So I'd rather do something like the rope or a straight bar pushdown so I can really you know, squeeze it. So, I don't know, man. Skull crushers, I do them on occasion. I'd say they're a lift where it's very valuable on occasion. In terms of close grip bench, I don't know. I don't like it because I always activate a little bit too much chest. But nothing wrong with it. So... That's sort of where my head's at with triceps. I'll have to see what, well, for one thing, I have to see what's going to be open when I actually get in there. But for buys, I feel a bit more confident in my training. Like, I definitely think I'm getting some solid stimulus with my heavy dumbbell curls, preachers, dumbbell preachers, straight bar cable curls, straight bar barbell curls. I mean, with buys, I think I've got it down. All I've got to do is make sure I go hard and, you know, pump them up to hell. So forearms, I'm just going to get a pump too. And then a little bit of calves at the end. You know, my, my stance on calves is the same as you know, the old school bro science logic. Like they're a stubborn muscle. They can handle, you know, really frequent stimulation. Right? And does that, does that not make sense? 
you know, you're walking around in your calves all freaking day, right? They're kind of, they're used to being worked. So just thinking about it that way, you know, if a muscle is used to a certain activity, right? Do you think it's going to grow from that same, you know, level of exertion, right? Let's say, I mean, if you're full of food, you could probably just walk, you know, fucking all day right? <laughs> Until you're completely exhausted, you know? So your legs are used to that little bit of walking. They're not just going to grow <laughs> if you go to the gym and do that same shit, right? So if you're a 200 pound dude walking around, fuck man, let's say you got a 10 pound backpack with a laptop and a textbook, you know, every time you take a step, you're almost doing a little bit of a calf raise. So that's their baseline. That's what they're used to, you know, to grow a muscle, you've got to give it a stimulus that far exceeds what it's normally used to, right? My fucking biceps on a daily basis, except for in training, are not used to crazy ass fucking curls to failure with eight reps, right? So if, uh, if you kind of follow my roundabout way of saying, you gotta make sure your training is the most intense thing that you do all day. You, you know what I'm going for, it kind of turned into a little bit of a ramble. I, <laughs> I was about to lose my train of thought and say, eh, fuck it, whatever. No, no, I think it's all got out there. But I can feel some beta alanine tingling my cheeks and ears. So I think let's just get in there for that first set of whatever triceps ends up being. I was going to try to find a cable and do like heavy push downs to start. But all the ones where I can like slap an extra 45 or two 45s on, they're all taken. So instead, I'll just start it off the same as last arm day. Lighter, well, light-ish, you know, single arm cross body extensions. I swear I did this before I saw anybody else do it, but that was a long time ago. Not that, whatever. Let's just, let's just throw it around, really focus on the squeeze and burn out. Yeah, let's do two more just like that. feeling relatively pumped and now I want to do something actually fuck I gotta I need to find something overhead if I can't jerry-rig a cable system then I'm just gonna have to do single arm dumbbell behind the head extensions but uh I guess wish me luck in making some shit happen in the next few seconds yeah I tried to set up a fucking little rig of like a sitting on the preacher curl backwards and doing both cables at once it wasn't fucking it was not it i need to i need to keep trying new shit like that but that did not work so instead let's just throw the 50s behind my freaking neck one arm at a time really try to get a good stretch and then you know, just burn out <clears throat> Oh. <sighs> 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 
Oh, fuck. Oh. So I've kind of found with overhead stuff like that for triceps, I kind of like it going a little bit lighter because failure almost like sneaks up on me. Like I did this one machine and it was whole stack, whatever, but it was like this movement, but an actual machine holding a handle, what I would prefer to be using right now. But whatever, you know, 10 reps in, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna do another set of this. You know, I'm gonna get 100 reps right now. Then as soon as I hit 15, it's like the fatigue just like smacked me and I could barely even fucking move it from the bottom. So just a different style of uh, stimulus, I guess. You know, not really you know, reaching a point where I just can't move around a ton of weight anymore, but I'm not doing like really squeezing lighter reps either. Kind of somewhere in between, but whatever, let's do, uh, I think two more. It's been a while, so I kind of want to do a lot of this. Be careful if you're not doing this on like a fucking shoulder press seat. <laughs> I almost felt like I was gonna fall backwards. I almost lost my balance on some of those. But one more. Yeah, I love the stretch on these. I gotta add at least probably three sets of this to triceps from now on, or a similar movement. <laughs> So I've, I'd say be relatively careful with these. I mean, this is a very interesting way to load your triceps, which you really don't do pretty much fucking ever in daily life. So I'm being very careful not to like let my arm fall too far backwards or like too far over like here. You know, I don't want to mess with my rotator cuff. So I don't know if you'll feel the same way, but when I do these and I throw the weight up, Something about the tension in my lats and my pecs and everything else, I feel like my upper arm almost gets locked into position. And then all I have to focus on is trying to move the fucking dumbbell. So I think that's enough of this, but I can't understate. Well, actually, I guess I can. I don't know. I'm fairly sure my triceps could benefit from this style of overhead, you know, extension-based exercises. But... Maybe I just have small triceps and I gotta train them harder. You know, there's no specific exercise that's guaranteed gonna blow up any specific muscle on your build. You know, it's all about just you know, intensity and making sure you hit the entire muscle in pretty much every way that it's, you know, intended to be loaded. But let's, uh, let's move on to something else. Probably straight bar pushdowns or similar. Whoop. All right, all the cables are taken. But I'm not going to sit there for five minutes, wait for a machine which may or may not come. You know, how do I know those guys aren't on there for another 30 minutes doing a whole cable workout? So instead of letting them decide how long my rest periods are, I'm just going to pick a new fucking movement. So I think let's uh, just get at least one set of dips in. And if I, if I fucking finish it and I see a cable is open, then I'm going to run over there like Speedy Gonzalez and take it. 
But until then, let's just go crazy with uh, a moderate weight. There we go. No. <laughs> 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 Okay, let's do a drop set. Okay, that's good. Oh. Wish me luck to get a cable, but that was a solid ass set. All right, luckily, I was able to work in with uh, with Daniel. Love that guy. So, just fucking throw the weight around, squeeze hard. I'm so fatigued right now. The stack feels pretty good. So, no need to jerry rig any weird plates or anything. Okay. All right. Let's get some curls going. Only 55 minutes left till they close. Let's move on to something else. That was good though. I've got 225s on this short barbell. Let's just do a heavy kind of, little bit of a brutish swinging set of barbell curls. And then maybe I'll drop the 25s and do a lighter set of more squeezing reps afterwards. I'll see how I feel after this first one. Yeah, that was a good set. 
I do not want to do another one like that. Let's take these 25s off. Just the 25s, slower, a really good squeeze. Like, you know, this is pretty much a complete inversion or like a complete, uh, let's just say extremes case of the two kind of sets that I like doing. You know, I do like doing a set like that where I have to break down the form. I physically fail at like 10 reps. Like, I mean, with a little bit of extra hype, maybe I could have got two more, but for the most part, that's just getting pushed to like the physical limit. But with lighter weight, more reps, really focusing on a squeeze and a burn, making the reps difficult. You know, the reason I'm gonna hit failure on this set is kind of just, because I'm gonna reach a point where I'm like, okay, I can't fucking do another one. Even though physically, fuck man, maybe I could get five more. You know, I want to push it as hard as I can, but lighter squeezing sets are more taxing on my mind, I feel, than my actual body. If you, uh, if you understand the logic that I'm trying to get at. Okay. That was good. That was good. Let's um let's do something totally different. I don't know what. I gotta think about it. Some single arm cable curls will fucking do me good. So one thing that I do think about with these, and this isn't really a technique thing, kind of more so just an execution thing. If you stand right in the front of the cable while you do these one-arm curls, I feel like the cable fucking like wobbles around a little too much. So I try to stand in a way that like the cable is pushed up against the end of its range of motion, just so I don't have to deal with any of this. But other than that, I mean, I'm just gonna fucking squeeze hard. I'd say this is an in-between of the going really heavy versus light and squeezing type set. Definitely gonna contribute to a pump. Honestly, I think I'm gonna cut buys early. I might just do, I don't know. Because I mean, I pretty much feel almost fully pumped and I've definitely done some heavy work. I was just talking to my other friend and I was like, or I was saying like, you know, the highly advanced lifter, the guy who's totally in tune with his fucking body, he just knows. Like, let's say he does five sets of buys really hard. He knows, okay, one more will be pretty much the peak of, you know, muscle stimulation for this workout. You know, I've been doing, I mean, the last like year, I've been doing 11 sets. Now I've been on a kick of doing eight sets. I think somewhere within this range of like maybe six to 10 hard sets, you know, combination of really heavy and light and squeezing, I think somewhere around there is the perfect number. And that'll probably change depending on the day or the body part or whatever. So I wanna to get to the point where I can just go in do three sets of buys and know, okay, after the next two, I'll, I'll be done. Like just based on feeling, but I'm not at that level yet. So I don't know, maybe I'll just do all, all eight. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, one more. Let's do some dumbbell curls next. I think I am gonna finish the whole eight. <sighs>
Let's check the pump. <gasps> All right, I, uh, I'll save CADs and forums for you for another day. I'm gonna do them, but I'm kind of in a rush, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna inhibit the lift by saying some smack in between sets or whatever. But let's just let the arm pump speak for itself. Oh. So yeah, I mean, I am a little torn. I'm like, I felt like I was approaching fully pumped and the buy is on set five. So it's like, is that my cue to be done? You know, I'm not really sure yet. I definitely know that I wouldn't want to do so many sets that, like, let's say I do this much volume, you know, and I hit my fully pumped level at halfway through, I wouldn't want to keep going beyond that. So, you know, the concept of volume, it is on my mind. It is something to think about, but I don't think you're going wrong with like, you know, six sets per body part up to maybe 12-ish sets per body part. And even then, I'm sure the, like, let's say quote unquote, level of stimulus that you get from six to 12, it's probably still a pretty flat peak. Like I'm sure somewhere in there on any given day is the perfect amount of volume. But as long as you're close, I think you're good. I think you're freaking good. If you go heavy, you finish with a pump, what else can you ask for? So let's, uh, let's run through some classics here. <laughs> oh yeah. I definitely fucking feel pumped, that's for sure. Side try and then I'm gonna finish forearms and calves. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. So I did get a measuring tape. I forgot to bring it, but right now, cold. So in the morning before eating anything, they're both 19 inches. So pumped. They've got to be approaching 20. I don't think they're 20 yet. I think they might be 19 and three quarter. Hard to say. 20 inches pumped. That's a pretty badass number. But to have your arms get to 20 inches cold, just walking around, no pump, no nothing. You hit a flex and they're 20 inches around. That is a solid ass fucking milestone. But, you know, I'm sure even once I hit 20, I'll be like, all right, now it's time for 21s. So don't get attached to, you know, numerical goals. Try to make sure you're just hyped up with progress in general. I think that's a better mindset for longevity. That's my 15 minutes cue. I'm gonna go slam calves and forearms and then let's get in the car. All right, forearms. All right, well by now the, the, the whole pump is fucking gone, but I just spammed some of the single arm kind of cable almost looks like a fucking arm wrestler workout. And then jumped on the calf raise, sat there for a bit. I only did six sets of each instead of the typical eight, but still felt a solid amount of fatigue as well as a solid freaking pump. So now I just gotta go home, eat and fucking sleep. Perfect, freaking perfect cardio in the morning, so. I was seeing a bunch of, uh, so this is not as soon as I got in the car. I've just been sitting here for like 20, <laughs> no, actually just 30 minutes fucking scrolling. You know, 
and I've seen a bunch of TikTok, Instagram reel style posts where it's fucking, I don't know what it is, but like a lot, well, I guess I do know, but there's a lot of like downer posts, a lot of fucking doomer style posts about working out where it's like, oh fuck dude, she fucking, oh man, this like, you know, just real depressing shit, which totally not knocking, man, it's mad valid, but when it comes to working out in general, I think, now this is not like a fucking objective statement, this is kind of just my opinion, but I think having more of a stoic approach to something long term, which requires like daily effort on your end if you want to actually get results, you know, I think having a little bit more of a stoic mindset is better for you, you know, like sometimes fucking, you go weeks, months, maybe even fucking years, just killing it, everything's working out, you're just cruising through life, it's fucking badass, but shit hits the fucking fan sometimes, like family, interpersonal, sports, school, shit like that, you know, obviously I'm always mad fucking jovial on these, because every time I'm in the fuck, every, <laughs> every time I get the camera going, I'm going to lift, or I'm eating my meals, you know, I'm doing something which I know is getting me closer to a goal I have, so of course I'm fucking, you know, hyped up for it. But shit hits the fan sometimes. Come on, let's be real. That's just part of life. But in general, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to linger on it too much. You know, I've, uh, over the course of time, I've kind of found that, like, cliche fucking statements, cliche little mottos, you know, shit like when people say fucking, like the kind of shit where it's like, oh, the grass is always greener on the other side type deal. Like those little cliches which you kind of just hear, you don't really put much emphasis onto them. You know, they're all fucking true. So for the most part, if you're going through shit, as long as you don't, you know, muddle and just kind of stay too down, right? As long as you know you're going to get your ass back up, you'll kind of feel better at the end of it. Plus, that's where you really develop, you know? Like you don't, uh, you don't really build character just by chilling, right? When shit goes crazy... You know, in times of intense emotion, when you reach this... Oh, fuck, what's the quote I'm trying to think of? It's from a Grave Mind video. Damn, yeah. Look it up. Grave Mind, Six Realms of Existence. That video is super good. That's kind of getting into some, philosoph some philosophical type shit. But, you know, when shit really goes crazy, that's where you kind of develop as a person, so... Try not to get too depressed about it. But when it comes to lifting, dude, like, I don't know. Like, when I see dudes who, like, uh, you know, I, I've got a couple of friends who always have girl trouble. And I'll see them come into the lift and they're fucking, like, they look like they're in the zone, but I know why. It's because they're just fucking upset. I don't know if that's the best way to go about it, right? Because when you introduce all these outside factors into the gym, I feel like you're not really in there for yourself. Like you're trying to, you know, go hard or get, you know, certain amounts of results or whatever, just to almost get over on someone else or fucking, like, do it for someone else's approval or like you want to show them or like, yeah, it's fucking, look what you're missing out on. Like, that's, I don't know, man, that just seems so superficial. You know, in that sense, I feel like you're just allowing other people's opinions and thoughts to control what you do, right? For the most part, the more often that you can do shit, purely because it's what you want to do and it's going to bring you yourself satisfaction immediately not just like making you feel better because you know that someone else is now thinking this about you that's almost like a roundabout set of satisfaction if you get what i'm saying like you know, just i don't know i kind of feel like just don't sh don't do shit just because other people tell you to right i guess that's sort of what i'm trying to get at motivational style if he, if any of that was <laughs> freaking cohesive, but you know, arms done, freaking fully pumped. I really do like that overhead dumbbell. I've been, I don't know why I haven't been doing that for a while. I think the last time that I did the overhead single arm dumbbell, I must not have liked it or something. It must have felt a little funky, so I haven't been doing it. You know, I totally, I must have totally just forgot that some days, some fucking movements just don't feel that good. You know, like some days I do not even want to touch 
inclined barbell. <sighs> like, I don't know, I just don't like it, so. If you have been avoiding a specific movement for a while, maybe just throw it in, dude. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you get to say, okay, yeah, I guess I really don't fucking like that. And move on to something else. But yeah, that stretch, especially overhead, I think that, that is going to do my triceps good. And then buys, obviously. I, don't, I never really have a problem getting a bicep pump, even if I'm kind of feeling off. They just, they're just freaking prime for work for me, which is sick. You know, some muscle groups I definitely have an easier time with. Well, I don't even know if that's... I think it might be more accurate to say some muscle groups for me, I'm more consistently pumped on. Like, for the most part, I never have a problem getting a chest pump. Back pumps always come easy. Quads are a little tougher just because quads require a lot more energy, a lot of fucking exertion. If I was texting and driving right now, I would have totally smacked this, uh... Oh, shit, it's got antlers. Nice. Little fucking deer crossing the street. Did not even wait for a fucking crosswalk. Honestly, kind of an asshole move on his part. But, um... Yeah, so back always get a pump. Hamstrings always get pumped. Shoulders. <laughs> No doubt about it. I mean, four sets into side laterals, I'm fucking already kind of burning. Uh, but, you know, some body parts, like sometimes with buys, uh, well, I don't even know. I feel like some days, some of my arm days, triceps are just fucking perfect, fully pumped, real swollen. And then buys, I don't know, it just doesn't click. But even though it might not be clicking that specific day, it doesn't mean I'm not going to go hard. It doesn't mean I'm not going to finish the workout. Right? You're still doing the work, right? I'm still doing my sets, and I'm still going to failure. So, in that sense, you know, sometimes judging it based off the pump is a little bit, uh, maybe just a little bit of a subjective feeling, right? Like, I don't know. If you haven't been getting any pumps at all, I've seen comments like this, probably more so with uh, dudes who are in their earlier months, if maybe year-ish of lifting, and like, dude, I just can't get a pump. I don't even, I don't know what to tell you, man. You got to try some new shit. Honestly, if if you're missing out on the pump itself, I think you've got to find a, or you got to ask your buddy who's been lifting for a little while, for a little while longer than you, or if you don't have one, you got to fucking make friends with somebody who's been lifting for a little while longer than you, and uh, maybe just fucking shadow them. You know, you can get a lot out of watching videos, out of watching, I want to basically instructional videos, right? Talking about how to do specific lifts you know, how to structure a workout and stuff like that. But you're really going to learn the most just from experience, right? Being in the gym with somebody who's actually giving you little tips, that is probably the most valuable information that you can get. But then again, it kind of depends on how informed the dude who you're listening to is. I mean, there's a lot of fucking gym bro BS quote unquote knowledge getting thrown around. So that's where, it, that's where the responsibility falls on you to be able to decipher, you know, solid information, solid tips from, uh, you know, fucking <laughs> gym bro mumbo jumbo, right? And sometimes that's harder than others. Because if you're listening to one dude who's fucking yoked out of his mind, jacked, you might be subconsciously inclined to kind of believe him a little bit more than the smaller lifter, right? I, uh, I make a bunch of fucking... I feel like almost all my TikToks are, are ironic. You know, I'm saying some shit like, don't listen to anybody smaller than you. But no, man, people have good information. But you know, sometimes you got to think, if someone is huge, then whatever they're doing works for them. So you've got to be able to maybe, like, okay, so you like doing curls really light, re just really focus on squeezing, you don't go heavy at all. Like, imagine a guy bigger than me, and he's like, you know, I only, curled, I only curl the 30s. I never go heavier than the 30s, man. Fuck, that works for him. And maybe I would do a couple of lifts where I go a little bit lighter. But for the most part, I want to do what I know that I like. And the longer that you lift and the longer that you fucking watch videos about lifting, I mean, I feel like that's half of all my social media apart from just random ass memes and stuff. Right? As soon as you type into Google fucking uh, hostile subs CDX, or fucking pre-workout, or if you order some Amazon, uh, like, lifting straps or anything, 
as soon as you type anything about lifting into your phone, it fucking knows. It knows you're a lifter and it's going to start feeding you that shit. So the more that you kind of have that in your little, uh, in the front of your mind, watching videos or thinking about it and talking to people about it, actually going to the gym, being surrounded by that kind of stuff. If you're actually paying attention and kind of thinking about what you're doing instead of just like going to the gym, there's definitely a lot of people where they just go. That's the end of it. Maybe they do what their buddy's doing. They don't think about it too much, which, you know, whatever. But if you do want to kind of get some legit results, you should be putting a solid amount of thought into it, even outside the gym. I mean, I've said this before. I think if you were to do like, like, you know, on your phone, you've got your watch time. Like you can see oh, eight hours on TikTok today, four hours on YouTube. Like if you were to do that on what goes through my mind every day, for the last fucking five years. <laughs> I mean, top spot is going to be anything gym related, you know, and that may be broken down into like lifts, fucking recovery, food. I feel like that's just the front of my mind at all times, which whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, who's to say, but in the context of, you know, making gains, I'm definitely not opposed to it, but I, I kind of feel like a freak in that sense, but that's the point trying to get we're trying to become a fucking freak so as this bulk progresses I definitely want to break into the 260s you know I'm not a uh, I'm not married to any specific number I don't have a numerical goal really you know the next four or five months I want to really push the food down obviously train hard and when I'm full of carbs and I'm fully fed it's really not too hard for me to train hard so really it's just the perfect scenario but I'll just get as heavy as I can and then once my weight kind of plateaus for, you know, longer or so much that I can't push the food anymore and I gotta just call it, then that'll be the end weight. We'll do another little mini cut to resensitize. And by the time I do that little cut, I will have been heavier than I was at the beginning of the bulk, right? The starting weight for this one was 232, and this morning it was 242, so we're on track. You know, that was not 10 pounds of muscle, of course, that's just you know, 10 pounds of water and carbs from this first week of, you know, eating all my treats and opening up the floodgates calorie-wise. But, yeah, I think as time progresses, we're going to get some serious freaking size. And that's the point. That is the freaking point. So, cardio in the morning. I'll probably have to prep some meals because I've got to go to class for a couple hours. So I'm going to be out of the house for about a five-hour chunk of period before I can come back. And that's kind of pushing it, you know, on a bulk, I want to eat my food in a pretty evenly dispersed way. So a five hour chunk of no food, you know, that can kind of put me behind schedule. And then I'd have to eat a real big meal when I get back. I think kind of a steady flow of caloric intake is going to be my best bet. So I'll probably prep some steak and rice or something, maybe bring like a fucking sandwich or a bagel or something, you know, whatever, any kind of food. So, then I got the legs, got to make sure I get a good night's rest for that, but I'm already freaking excited. So, I think that's about it for me, man. I'll see you next time.